Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we are going to discuss what is domain and why they are needed. We have already started the Microsoft Fabric trial and we are ready to start our Microsoft Fabric journey. Now to start this journey, first of all, we'll create a domain. We need to understand what is domain and why they are needed. So first of all, let's understand the need of a domain. Organizations are experiencing rapid data growth requiring logical organization and effective governance. To address this, they are moving from centralized IT-centric data architecture to data mesh, a decentralized model that organizes data by business domains, example marketing, sales, HR. Microsoft Fabric supports data mesh by enabling domain based organization allowing the data consumers to filter content by domains and enabling federated governance this approach lets business units define their own rules and restriction while maintaining overall governance so basically for better governance we wanted to organize or decentralize our data architecture into domains so we wanted to have a data mesh architecture where we want to decentralize our data organizations into business domains and wanted to create a domain based on business. So let's look at the definition of domain now in Microsoft Fabric. In Microsoft Fabric, a domain groups data logically by areas like business departments enabling tailored management based on the specific regulation need. Workspaces are associated with domains and their item inherits the domain attributes enhancing the content discoverability such as filtering by domain in one link. Additionally, some tenant level governance settings can be delegated to domain level allowing domain specific configuration. So in Microsoft Fabric, we will be able to create domains which are logical areas like business departments and they will allow us the management of data in a decentralized manner. Then we can create subdomains inside the domains. So what is a subdomain? A subdomain is a way for fine tuning the logical grouping of your data. You can create subdomains under domains. So further let's say in case you have a domain like marketing you can further create subdomain inside the marketing to have a finer logical grouping. Then we have something known as domain roles. The three roles in managing domains in Microsoft Fabric are Fabric Admin, Domain Admin and Domain Contributor. Now to let you know the details about these roles I'll take you to the Microsoft Learn document and I will also provide the link of the same into the description. So I'm here on the Microsoft Learn document which talks about fabric domain, the need, the key concept, the subdomain and the domain roles. So fabric admin. Fabric admins can create and edit domains, specify domain admins and domain contributor and associated workspace with domains. Fabric admins can see all defined domains and domain tab in the admin portal and they can edit and delete domains. Is they can see all the domain, they can create it, they can edit it, they can delete it. Those are fabric admins. Then comes the domain admin. Ideally, the domain admins of the domain are the business owners or designated expert. They should be familiar with the data in their area and the regulations and restrictions that are relevant to it. Domain admins can access domain tab in the admin portal but they can only see and edit domains they are admin of. Domain admins can update domain description, define update domain contributors and associated workspace with the domains. They can define and update domain image and override tenant settings. For any specific setting, the tenant admin has delegated to the domain level. They can't delete the domain, change the domain name or add or delete other domain admins. Is they will not be able to change the name, they will not be able to delete other domain admins. 
Domain contributors. Domain contributors are the workspace admin whom a domain or a fabric admin has authorized to assign the workspace. They are admin of a domain or to change the current domain assignment. Domain contributor assign the workspaces. They are an admin of the settings of the workspace itself. They don't have access to the domain tab in the admin portal. Then we have more detail like domain setting delegation, domain image, domain default, creation of domain, structure of your data in the domain, etc. So you can have a look at this document. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through Microsoft Fabric. And I'm here on the Microsoft Fabric and this time I'm using app.powerbi.com URL. I can reach the same using app.fabric.microsoft.com. Here I'll go to settings, admin portal. And inside the admin portal, I can see this domain is from the left hand side. Let me click on that. As of now, there are no domains created. So I will create a domain. Click on create a domain button in the middle of the screen. It is asking for a domain name and let me give the domain name as sales. Most of the time I'm using the sales data. And then I can add the domain admins here. I can type the email IDs and can add the domain admins. So I've added one domain admin here. And let me click on create to create my domain. A domain has been created and here you can see the domain name, admins, subdomains, default domain for. I can click on ellipsis or the three dots and can view the settings. Inside the setting I can see the general setting where I can see the domain name. I can add a description to it. Domain image. If I wanted to set an image for my domain, I can give it here. Admins. I can add more admins using this option or I can remove admins which are already there. Contributors. Who are going to be the contributors? The entire organization, the specific user security groups, the tenant and the domain admins only. I'll keep it the entire organization. Default domain. Add the users or the security group to default the domain list. When you add the people to this list, their new and unassigned workspace will be automatically assigned to the domain. It also makes them domain contributor. So if I add the people here, their unassigned workspace or the new workspace will automatically add it to that domain and they will also become the domain contributor. So I can add few names here. As of now, I don't want to do that. So I will leave it. But now you understand what can be done using default domain. I'm done with the domain setting and the next step is to create a workspace and start creating Microsoft Fabric item inside that. So why don't you go ahead and try these out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you. Keep watching, keep asking questions in comments, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification for new videos. Thank you.